Are you ready for a Twinkle Tips Friday video? Let's get right to it. Welcome back, folks. Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Display. Thank you for returning again to another Twinkle Tips Friday video. We hope you are having a fantastic week wherever you are, and we hope you are ready to enjoy your weekend if you have the time to. So today's video is going to be interesting because it's a, a topic I've never, ever uh, discussed in detail or even tried to break down. In fact, I've done a very poor job of it. And what I'm going to share with you today is a Facebook post that uh, actually it's a poll. We like to do polls in the PPU Facebook group. You're welcome to join. Links in the video description. By all means, click on the link and join the PPU Facebook group. The poll was on what frame rate do you use in your sequence? I was uh, I was enlightened by a number of things, a, a number of thought processes people have. So. I want to share with you uh, what frame rate is and how it affects your sequence and what you can expect whenever you are dealing with these frame rates whenever you're working inside x -Lights. So first I want to share with you the poll. Let's get out of the way here real quick. And we'll move this over here so you can see it. Uh, basically what you see here, this is the poll, and again it's nothing surprising. Uh, about about 77% of the people use 40 frames per second in their sequences, 18%, rounded up to 20, we'll say, uh, is is using 20 frames per second. Uh, other than that, um, everybody else is using something else, 60 or 100 frames per second. So what is a frames per second? Um, or what what's millisecond timing? The easiest way I can describe this is take a second of time and let's say you have um, five frames per second. That's slicing one second of time up into five individual frames. Uh, I started doing this in Microsoft Excel. You can see here I have five frames per second, 10, 20, 40, 60, and 100. Um, but I decided actually to do this in X-Slides. It made sense to me to show you the Excel spreadsheet. Per the first second of the song, you've had five segments. And each of those segments is relative to like a flip book. So here's here's my notepad. What a flip book is, is whenever you take it and flip it, and it's how many of these pages flip per second. So if you can imagine being an old school cartoonist, and you took a stick figure, and you drew a stick figure on the corner of this, and you physically drew out a stick figure on each page, but you slightly moved one piece of the arm, and you could make it look like he's animated moving his arm so far. Well, the frames per second is how many times this flip book turns, and that's what we're looking at whenever we turn around and we're... we're, we're and that's what we're looking at whenever we turn around and look and see this little slice of time. Each one of those is a page. The number of pages possible that you could flip in your flip book in one second. So if we have five millisecond timing, we have five slices of time. If we have 10 millisecond timing, we have 10 slices of time in one second. If we have 20, well, now you have 20. Now, how do I know that this is accurate? Because if you watch this little screen here and I click and drag that whole segment there, that's 20 frames. That's 20 squares. That's 20 slices that I get to slide my effect to lock in place into. And so that's what x Slice will do is it will apply the effect, what the effect should look like in each one of those frames. So obviously, the higher the frame rate you go, the more slices you get into one second. So if I click and drag here, click and drag over, see there's 40 frames in a box. And then you can obviously do here 60 frames and this is where it gets really kind of crazy. If we click and drag, there we go, see 60 frames. And then obviously 100 frames. You can't even see the little tick marks. You, you, literally, you literally have to zoom in just to see the tick marks between these. So to click and drag, look at that. That that's a hundred. That's a hundred little itty bitty squares inside this one giant square. That whenever you zoomed out, you can't even see it. So why is why are these frame rates important? Well, it's because how much of the animation that you can move 
from one block of time to the next. And I'll demonstrate this using X lights here next. So I want to explain how you create the sequence first. And this is where you enter your millisecond timing uh, to set up your sequence. And to do this, we can create a new sequence and we can either choose musical or animation. You can see that on the screen here. And I'm going to choose animation. And there's two predetermined ones, uh, 25 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds, 20 frames or 40. I prefer 20. Other sequencers prefer 40. You can do whatever uh, makes you happy. And uh, I'll just go ahead with 20 frames per second. If uh, I'm just going to click done. And now the sequence is now created. But you can also change an existing sequence. And you can do it the frame you can change your frame rate by clicking on the sequence settings icon and click here where this little uh, question box is see how this says 50 millisecond well if we didn't want 50 and we wanted actually 25 which is 40 frames per second we could click this little checkbox it says are you sure modifying the time interval will cause the sequence to be saved closed then reopened effects will be moved to the nearest interval go ahead and click yes and now see how it opens up and says 50 milliseconds and you can change this to let's say 25 notice how it changes this to 40 frames per second click OK and now it's going to ask me to save this sequence and as you can see X lights closed the sequence it saved it and it reopened it and now you can see the 25 millisecond timing is now showing as opposed to the 50 millisecond timing that was showing before so now let's go in and open it up and check check out a sequence so i want to start out now with the five frames per second as you can see we've got a pinwheel effect here i'll click on it in just a moment but i want to set this up so that you can see how all of the other sequences are aligned because they're all set up the same the only difference is is i have five sequences that are all the same except I've started them all at different frame rates. This one here is five fr frames per second. And as you can see, the one second of time is this period right here. This is one second of time from this timing mark to this timing mark. Now, if I click over and I hit the second timing, the second one below it, I have it listed as 200 millisecond timing or five frames per second. And you can see in this five frame area, when we switched over, I can now click one, two, three, four, five total times maximum in that frame, in those frames. There's only five places for me to click, or there's only five locations for X lights to implant an effect onto your sequence. So if we hit and render the uh, pinwheel effect here, you can see one, two, three, four, five. It's trying to use that five frames per second to its advantage and uh, extrapolate the effect. Now, the more frames you have, the more pages in your book, and the faster that you can get them across there, the, the more smooth it's going to look. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll put this down here. And this one here, this is listed at 10 frames per second. So it's the same thing, one second of time. But if we switch over, we have 100 millisecond timing. We also have 10 frames per second. It's the same thing. If the milliseconds are lower and the frames are higher, that means the timing's getting closer and closer. We're adding a few more pages per second. And if we zoom in here, we can click and drag across this and you see, look, there's 10 frames and here's your one second guide. So if we click and drag there, you can see 10 frames. Let's go ahead and render this so you can see. So as far as the choppiness, it's still choppy, but it looks a whole lot more like an animated pinwheel, right? Like it's getting better. So, well, let's go ahead and look at the 20 frames per second. All right, so we've got 20 frames per second on the screen here. The same rules apply. If we zoom in, you can see here's one second of time, and that's what we've got selected. But these one, two, three, four, five, this is this is 20 frames. So this is 50 millisecond timing. The first number is getting smaller, closer together. The, the frames per second gets bigger. And as you have higher frames per second, that means you have more little blocks to work with. And so when we take this and we render it, and now we look at this, it's way more smooth. It's doubly smooth. You figure we went from five frames per second and we doubled it to 10 frames or we, we, we 
added 10 extra frames. So now at 20 frames, that looks rather smooth. And to me, I think that works great for whenever I'm trying to sequence. That's where I like to work at. This is kind of my wheelhouse right here. Let's go ahead and pull in the 40 frames per second next. All right, here we are. This is our 40 frames per second. As you can see, we've got one second of time selected right here. And if we zoom in really, really close, we can see all of these little timing marks here. That's 40 frames. Again, that number is getting smaller in the millisecond side, but it's getting larger in the FPS side. We go ahead and click on that. And if we click and drag, and we stretch it out over per the second with 40 slices of timing. Now, again, this is the most common, the most popular way to sequence your songs. A lot of the a lot of the vendors sequence at this. Some of them don't. Some of them use higher frames per second. That's another conundrum we're going to get into here in a few moments. But you can see this is gives you more more time to have that effect be rendered in X lights. So you can see that pretty much all the choppiness is completely gone. Um, I felt it was gone in the last one. Judge for yourself what you like the best. But so far we've got 40 frames per second. Let's go grab the 60 frames. All right, so the, the, the last one, 60 frames per second. Unfortunately, x -Lights won't let me extrapolate exactly to 60 frames per second. It lets me do 61 frames per second, but it's 17 millisecond timing. It's getting close. If you're sequencing at this rate, you have 60 little blocks, 60 itty bitty individual blocks between each second where you can lay down an effect. If I put, let's, let's put a layer of, uh, underneath of here layer. Uh, there we go. We got a layer underneath. If I come over here, and I want to see the distance that the effect travels per each second. I can click and put an off effect here and an off effect and an off effect. So from here to this frame, you can see how close those frame rates are whenever you go between this second timing and this second of timing. This distance here is literally 0.0 one seven of a second. So we're looking literally at one frame inside X lights. The distance between those frames just by clicking it slightly shows you how far the distance has traveled. Let's go back in and I want to show you this from the 10 millisecond timing. If we come down here, insert a layer below and we put the off effect and the off effect. If we click on this, look at the distance that it travels whenever you go from here to here, and then again to here. So between here and here and this, you can see the choppiness because it only can go so far, whereas you've traveled in this period of time, you've traveled 0.3 of a second. Here you're traveling 0 0.051 of a second. So as you can see, the frame rates per second do make a huge difference in the calculation and how well X lights and your computer monitor can output the data to you. So real quick, because I know everybody's going to be interested to see this, I'm going to go ahead and activate these one at a time. All right, there you can see it, guys. You can see the difference between every single set of frame uh, and timing that we've walked through. You can you really notice a difference whenever you're on five to ten frames per second. That's for sure. Whenever you get to 20, that's right in the middle. That's where I like to be. Then you have 40 frames per second, which is literally doubling what is available in the 20 frames per second. And can you tell a difference? I really can't tell a difference, but maybe you can. And then there is 60 frames per second. Looking at 60 and 40, they both look identical to me, but the choice is up to you. That's what I'm trying to get to. So the next question that most people are going to ask is, how does this affect me whenever I'm mapping my sequences over from uh, a vendor sequence and into my sequence? Well, 
the truth is is that there is no current way in x lights when you're importing a sequence to know exactly what frame rate the sequencer is using i can tell you that i use 20 frames per second for my sequences but imagine this imagine that another sequencer that you you uh, download sequences from happens to do it at 40 frames per second and you only do yours at 20 frames per second you can import their sequences in no problem just import you just create your new sequence at 20 frames per second and you can import them in well what if you're buying a sequence that's uh, only at 20 frames and you sequence at 40 frames works both ways so guys the couple of questions that you want to ask yourself before you decide on your frame rate per second is how many pixels are you running on the um, pixel strings that you're uh, that you have out there in your show the the thing is is that some controllers like I said earlier have limits to how many how much data it can push out for the 2811s to get reliable 40 frame per second sequencing from X lights out to the pixels I don't even know that you can get a reliable 60 frames per second at this time using any of the controllers. I, now, I could be wrong. Um, I, I really haven't looked into the Falcon Pi controllers. There could be a number of updates and enhancements to the F16 V5 that I'm not aware of yet. If you're like a lot of us that are in the hobby or have been in the hobby for a number of years, then 20 frames per second is pretty much guaranteed out of every controller. 40 frames per second is not. So if you run a small show, try running 40 frames per second. If you keep your, your string counts down, let's say between 200 to 400 per output, you probably are going to have a good chance at, at achieving 40 frames per second. But your mileage may vary. I don't know what controllers you have, and it's hard to give you a concrete a advice on absolutely every individual controller. But what I would love to see is your response in the comments to how you've been able to achieve better frame rates and what you've done in order to get a better result with your output to lights whenever you're sequencing using different millisecond timing. So guys, that's everything from me here at Pixel Pro Displays. As always, we appreciate the fact that you joined us. We thank you for watching the video. If you like the video, please give us a huge thumbs up if you haven't done yet. So hit the subscribe button down below and don't forget the bell for notifications. Remember, join us every Tuesday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the PPD Zoom Room. We have either it's an open mic night or it is also a webinar. So next week is going to be a open mic. Uh, no? Yeah. <laughs> Next week is going to be an open mic night because, uh, well, this past week we did a uh, webinar. We're going to upload the webinar from this week, uh, coming up this weekend, so keep your eyes peeled for that. That's why you need to subscribe and check out the content that we're doing. If you appreciate the content, consider joining the PPD Sequence Club. We do two awesome sequences each and every month. Well... You get to pick any of the, well, there's three of them you get to pick from, but you get awesome discounts from an, our affiliate vendor list, and there are a host of other reasons to join the PPD Sequence Club. So, guys, thank you for joining us. This is Clyde signing out. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you in the next video. Take care and bye for now. Welcome back, guys. Thank you for tuning in to our Twinkle Tips Friday video. We hope, hope, hope. <laughs> Take two. Welcome back, folks. Clyde here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for joining us again for another Twinkle Tip Friday video. Uh, so, I, I, I hope. <laughs> Take three. So, guys, let's get right into it. Today's video has been held up. Believe it or not, I sat and recorded three different videos, three different versions of the video, and finally decided on the one topic that I'm going to stick to in this video because there's a lot going on whenever it comes to getting started with sequencing.